tribe, Kimisabi. Them Cheyenne. We have every right to be proud of them, Tunnel. Them proud, too. Them ride with great war chief Ironhand. That boy, uh, Greyfeather, him chief's nephew. His horse name Wind Spirit. Passed his quarter horse in all Wyoming. And don't forget, Tunnel. There's another quarter horse named Thunder. He's been meeting all comers and beating them. Look, there he comes now. Thunder, him good-looking horse. Do you notice who owns him? Uh, Slim Wiley. No wonder him win every race, him crooked owner. It's been three years since we sent Wiley to prison. Maybe he's changed. Come on, Tonto, let's move on. Would you like to race that quarter horse? I'll bet you could beat the daylights out of him. Me bet Scout could beat him too. He must have me. Tell me where quarter horse come from. The town of the quarter horse originated in Texas, my home state. Him bred from a race horse? I'm a thoroughbred stallion crossed with a range mare. Although opinions differ on that point. But there's only one opinion on their speed. Funny him not run fast for more than a quarter mile. As a matter of fact, they can. But the quarter horse isn't bred for racing a long distance. Don't forget, the quarter horse is a ranch horse. Bred for ranch work. Me bet Slim Wiley's quarter horse not do ranch work. Nor Slim Wiley either. Not while him can make dishonest dollar. Tano, aren't you being a little hard on Slim? Him guilty once, Kimasabi. He made a mistake, and he paid for it. Me not like idea of him riding into town for race with Cheyenne Pony. If him do something crooked, him make big trouble between white man and Indian. That's true. Seeing that's the way you feel about it, you better ride into town and keep your eye on Slim. Me go now? Tano, I think you just want to watch a horse race. Not only part of it, Kimasabe. Me ride back right after me, take a look around. I'll be waiting for you at the top of the trail. like having a grandstand seat for the race, Dad. Yeah. Here comes the Cheyenne. Sir Alan, my nephew say you are his school teacher, his skamitan. Pahonehe. Pahonehe. It is wise you speak the word of friend in the red man's tongue. I'll always be a friend of your people, Iron Hand. Good luck in the race, Greyfeather. <laughs> Hazel. Oh, Mark, I'm so glad you're here. I just told Dad about us, and he's taking no, it very no, hard. Now, now, kitten, let's not go into that again. I'm afraid I know what your father thinks of me. No hard feelings, Professor. I knew that you was going to take the big jump someday, but I'd always hoped You'd hoped to be a man and not just a school teacher, is that it? Well, as long as you put it that way, let it stand. I'm sorry you feel that way, sir. And so am I, Dad. And now I'll tell you what I always hoped. I always hoped I wouldn't have to make a choice between you and the man I was going to marry. Come on, Mark, I want to show you off to my friends. I think it's a hard major. She's all I've got, Ed. I had always hoped that. Yeah, she... yeah, I know. All of a sudden, she changed her mind. It's a woman's privilege. Maybe she will again. Maybe she will. A real good looking horse you got there for an engine pony. If you think you can beat this mirror of mine, maybe I better place a little bet on it. That is, unless you're scared of losing. Shine fears nothing. Spoken like a noble chief. Me? I got $500 to do my talking for me. Shine will match white man's money with gold. Scamitan. Scamitan will hold the Shine's money. And for you. Ain't you 
You gonna count the Indians gold, too? I don't have to. Iron Hand's word is good. I better take this back up to the hotel room. Horses to the starting line. Horses to the starting line. I don't think that... Where's Scummy Town? We're shying money. He'll be right out, Chief. Shine's been waiting a long time for Scummy Town. I can't understand what's keeping him, Chief. Dad, don't you think we'd better find out? Him? Well, I'm not very sure. Maybe he was an Indian, a thieving Cheyenne. No, he was a white man. He was tall, heavy set. He wore a black coat. He must have come in that side window from the alley. And, and he came up behind me when I went to the bureau. I saw him in the mirror. Did he wear a mask? Yeah, he had a bandana up to his eyes. And he carried a gun, a big one. A little gun would scare you. What did he say? Well, he said, give me the money. And you gave it to him just like that? No, for a moment I thought of calling out. Then he pulled the hammer back. And it clicked. They always click. Yeah. So then you decided not to call his bluff, huh? He wasn't bluffing. What else can you call it? You knew he wouldn't fire his gun with all of us out there on the porch and a whole town full of armed men. He wouldn't have got out of here alive. He knew it. Why didn't you? Let him alone, both of you. Hasn't he been hurt enough? I guess I wasn't thinking very fast. Takes a lot more than quick thinking in this neck of the woods. Hey, eh, Major Holiday? Well, it takes a lot of spunk to act after you think. Spunk? He didn't come out west to fight bad men. He came to educate the Indians. You know that, Chief. It's not a matter of east to west. It's a matter of boy or man. He's right, Hazel. No, Mark, no. After you so obligingly handed over the money to him, then what happened? Then he told me to turn around, and then he hit me with his gun. He hit you with the gun. You catch thief who steal Shine's money? You stay off my back, Injun. I got enough trouble as it is. You marshal. Trouble is your business. Just who do you think you are to tell me what my business is? I am Iron Hand. Chief of the Cheyennes. You're chief of nothing. Save that for the reservation. Around here, you're just another redskin. So don't tell me what my business is. Easy, Ed. All right, engine, what'd you lose? Cheyenne win. $500. Could have been beads, huh? Anybody count it? I mean a white man's count, not an engine's. Nobody doubt Iron Hand's words. I can doubt it. I'm the law around here. Your law is just for the white man, not for Indian. It's just what I say it is. Now get moving. Cheyenne want their money. You'll get your money if and when it turns up, not sooner or not later. You just remember that. I will remember. Cheyenne will remember. And don't you go threatening me. Get out of here before I throw you out. Go on! Wait a minute, Chief. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nerve of that engine. Well, he's only asking what's doing. I know, I know, Major. I can't expect to shake everybody down here in town. Besides, I didn't lose his money for him. You're right, it's my fault. If I'd stood up to that bandit, None of this would have happened. It's all right, Mark. Big trouble in town, Kimasemi. The Scamatan. The school teacher. Ah, Mark Allen hit very bad. You better tell me about it.
story. Mark Allen is in trouble. First camera 10 now, Kimisabe. Girl right after him. A man running away is not a pretty sight. I don't want them to see us, Tonto. Let's take cover in that brush corral. shouldn't have followed me. I'll always follow you. I'm not worth it. I didn't have the courage to keep from being robbed or to stay and face the town. There's still time. You can go back. It's no use. I can't. All right, Mark. Then let's go on, wherever you say. You mean you go with me? I've made my choice, Mark. Scared boy or a grown man, it's you. Hold it, the both of you. You're too late. Another masked man has already robbed me. This mask is on the side of the lawn, always will be. He must have want to help you out of troubles, Camatan. What do you know about his troubles? And what business is it of yours? We know because trouble's our business. Mark is in trouble. We'd like to help him. You know, Mark, I think he means it. What difference can it make? It's too late now. It's never too late, Mark. What happened to you happens to every man at least once in his life. Your manhood is challenged. You either face that challenge or you run away from it. What can I do? I can't replace the money I lost. How can I face a Cheyenne that trusted me? I've already failed, can't you see? Him see something you don't. Him see you. You're only a failure if you admit it. A man can go down, but if he goes down fighting, he's a success. At least he's tried. He's right, Mark. You know he is. All I know is I always want you to look at me just the way you're looking at me now. And I'll fight for that. Come on, let's go back. Oh, Mark. We'll face them all. Not just the Indians, but your father, Marshal McGuire, everyone who ever tried to come between us. I thought I couldn't, but now, thanks to you, I can. I'll never forget you for this. Never. Tano, I think we'd better take the back road into town. Why we do that, Kimisabi? There's a good chance we might run into Slim Wiley. Hold it, Wiley. Get off your horse. This has got to be it. This has got to be the unluckiest day of my whole life. First, an engine pony beats me in a race, then I drop $500. Now I got to bump into you. I heard about the 500. What I want to know is that you steal it back along with the Cheyenne's gold. I never touched that money. I'm clean. You must have me not take your word for that. You get no right to do this to me, mister. You got me figured all wrong. Stolen money, not hunting, Kimisabi. Check his saddlebags, Tyler. He won't find nothing. If you're so innocent, why are you running away? Because they might try to pin this robbery on me. Besides, I've been around this Indian country long enough to be able to savvy a danger sign. What danger sign? A big war chief like Iron Hand, pushed around and threatened by a white man. A white man? Marshal McGuire. He not only insulted the chief, but he acted like he couldn't be bothered about the missing money. That's odd for a law, man. Maybe he didn't mean it. But them Cheyenne are sure out in the warpath. Iron Hand and his braves lit out of here to go back and get their guns. They're coming back now to wipe out McGuire's insults. That could mean wiping out the whole town. If not have money stolen from Scamatan, Kim Sammy, and he search every place. Yeah, I told you so. Now can I go? Yes. I apologize. Good luck. Tyler, there must be some connection between that holdup and Marshal McGuire. Might be covering up his own guilt. But him get good salary as lawman, Kimisabe. Him not need to steal. Well, money isn't the only motive. There's love, jealousy, revenge. I think I've got it. Didn't Mark say that McGuire tried to come between him and Miss Halliday? Him say that, me remember. I think we'd better move fast before the Cheyennes will do something they'll always regret. Let's go. Come, this ought to hold him back for a spell. What are you doing back in town? I thought you ran away. I came back. I want a gun. Guns are for men. You're back with the women folk where you belong, schoolma. Never mind that. We'll be needing every finger that can pull a trigger. Not yours. 
Did you cause enough trouble around here letting yourself get robbed of the engine's money? You started Iron Hand on the warpath, treating him like dirt. Now give me a gun. Had your gun. Mark! Oh, Mark! Dad, help me get into the hotel, please. Easy, boy. Easy here. Yeah. Come on, let's go. I wouldn't do that, Marshal. I'm here to help. Help? Then why are you wearing a mask? You'll find out soon enough. Where's Mark Allen? Where do you expect to find a school marm? He's over at the hotel with the rest of the women. It's holiday. I must ask you a very personal question. You must answer it frankly if you want to avoid a massacre here. Was Marshall McGuire ever jealous of you and Mark? Yes, he was. He thought we were engaged. He was very bitter when I showed my preference for Mark. That's all I want to know. All right, men, check your gun, see if they're loaded, make every shot count. All right, masked man, it's time you told me who you are. I'm here to tell you what you are. The scrapes of that badge and the people you represent. A lawman who robbed a tenderfoot of the money he held in trust. Just so you could ruin his future with the Indian service and his marriage to the girl you wanted. You take that back or I'll kill you. I take nothing back, that's the truth. Go ahead if you think you can outdraw me. Oh no, I'm not matching shots with any outlaw gunslinger. Now let's see who you are. Follow your orders, Kimatabi. Watch from top of hill. Cheyenne war party coming. Them have many guns. You heard that, McGuire? Now, what are you going to do about it? You going to pay off Iron Hand and save your town? Now, where's the money you stole from Mark Allen? <laughs> Speak up. I put in his own saddlebags. My saddlebag? Why'd you do it, Ed? I couldn't stand a tender for beating my time. A school teacher. I thought you were a man. I was wrong, kitten. All wrong. Thank you. Thank you so much. You did help us after all. He couldn't have done it if he hadn't come back to face up to his own problems. Mark, where is he? I told you he was a coward. He was too yellow to stay away for that engine war party. Me see him leave, Kimasabe. Him ride toward pass where Cheyenne are. Well, then he's not running away. He's going out to meet them and give them the money. Him try to save town. He's riding to his death. No, he's riding to his manhood. But the money alone won't satisfy Iron Hand now. He intends to wipe out a bigger debt, a debt of honor. An insult to himself and his tribe. That's your responsibility. And I'm going to see that you apologize to Iron Hand before it's too late. No, they'll kill me. You've got no choice, McGuire. Tato, get his horse. Here is the stolen money, Iron Hand. Take it and go back. Too late for money to buy mercy. Out of my way. I am a friend of your people, Iron Hand. I can't let you start a war that'll destroy your tribe. Skamitan, don't make me take your life. Get out of my way. No, I won't let you pass. Get out of my...
Last man we have met before. In peace. And we meet again in peace. Iron Hand has no need to make war. The money debt is paid. And now for the larger debt. McGuire, get down and apologize. Now. And that's what happened, and I'm, and I'm sorry. Kamitan, Bahanehe. Bahanehe. You were a boy in town. Now you face Iron Hand like brave warrior. What changed you? The masked man. Where is he? Gone. And he never told us who he was. He is a friend of the red man and the white. Indians call him Himosabi. Horses here, Tonto. Ah, uh, them plenty thirsty. Tonto, quicksand. Easy, Silver. Silver and Scout know quicksand very dangerous. Animals can often sense danger before we do. Three shots, a signal of distress. Somebody in trouble. The cave from over that ridge. Come on. Cloud, age 25, killed by renegades. Mary White Cloud Indian School. Look like nobody worked here in a long time, Kim Sabe. Maybe that's why school not finished. What about the shots we heard? Oh. Tano. Oh. Listen. Oh. It come from inside building. Oh. Oh. Let's get this beam off. Now. Yeah. Lucky for you, we heard those shots. You'll be all right. No bones broken. I thought sure I was a goner when that ladder busted under me. The mask. Well, I'm not an outlaw. My friend and I only want to help. What's your name? Ben Sutherland. I'm a carpenter over at Alkali Springs. Why were you lifting that beam by yourself? Because I was the only one that cared about seeing Mary's Indian school get finished. After Mary got killed, why, people sort of forgot all about her. Me understand. You not forget, you keep fresh flowers on beam. Yes, Indian, I put them there. I never saw a human critter in all my days that had a bigger heart than she had. Well, who was this Mary White Cloud? She was a chief's daughter, who was educated in the East. This school was a one big dream. She wanted to see every child in her tribe get educated. And it cost her her life. Uh, how it cost her life? Rich cattleman sent her 10,000 gold to build the school and hire teachers. And these renegades killed her for the gold? Yeah. Couple of drifters she had working for her. Steve Grote and a half-breed named Blackhawk. Grote and Blackhawk. We tangled with them once in Montana. Me remember them, Kimasabi, them plenty bad men. Did these killers escape? Well, Blackhawk did. And a month ago, they caught Grote. As a matter of fact, uh, being hanged today in Alkali Springs. We've got to get him to town, but he's in no shape to ride. Me get wagon at Alkali Springs, Kimasabi. Don't you realize there's a thousand dollars reward for you in this town, dead or alive? I aim to stay alive. For ten thousand dollars in gold. Gold? Yeah. The money me and Groat stole a year ago from Mary White Cloud, only he hid it without giving me my cut. 
So that's why you come back. Do you know where it is? No, but you do. And you're going to tell me where it is. You're mistaken, Blackhawk. Groats never told me where the money was. Never told anyone, and I doubt very much if he's going to, because it's 1.30 now, and at 2 o'clock, they're going to hang him. That gives you a half hour to find out where he hid it. You better get started. Me? You're his lawyer. Mistaken again, Blackhawk. You're forgetting that I was disbarred right in the middle of his trial. He wouldn't give me the time of day. That's your tough luck. Either you find out where Groats got that gold hidden, or I'm going to put a bullet in you. Now, wait a minute, Blackhawk. Don't get nervous. I'll talk to him. If I do talk to him and he does tell me where the money is, do we split 50-50? Maybe. I'll think it over. But you double-cross me and you ain't gonna live long. Oh, oh, Sheriff. I was uh, wondering if I could have a word with my client before you... Uh... Well, I don't know what good it'll do you or him, but come ahead if you want to. Yes, Sheriff? Let this ex-lawyer in the gross cage. I got to get things ready for the hanging. You betcha, Sheriff. I ain't seen any visitors today, least of all him. Now, that's no way to be Groat. You know I did everything humanly possible to get you off. We just didn't have a chance with that jury. Not with you for a lawyer. You seem to be forgetting, Groat, that on account of you, I lost my license to practice in this town, trying to bribe a few witnesses for you. But now I'm willing to forget all about that, because I think I've got an idea that might get you a reprieve. Maybe a full pardon. No, who do you think you're kidding? Well, now, the territorial governor is pretty interested in Mary White Cloud getting that school built. Yeah, well, what's that got to do with saving my hide? You stole Mary White Cloud's gold. And I thought that maybe if you told me where you hid it, <laughs> I... <laughs> it won't work, Kylie. You'd be the last man in the world I'd ever tell. You mean, you don't want those Indian kids to have that school, even if it means saving your neck? My neck's past saving, mister. Yeah, I'd like to help those Indian kids, sure. A guy who's gonna swing, he gets to thinking. Because he don't know what's gonna happen to him on the other side. But I wouldn't trust you to get that money back where it belonged, because you'd keep it and I'd hang anyhow. You must think everyone is as crooked as you are. Oh, not everyone. Hey, Blake! Come here! That Indian across the street over there, he was my partner. Your partner? Yeah, Blackhawk. He was in on that killing with me. No point in his going free when I got to hang. Well, go on out there and nab him. He's packing a thousand dollar bounty. A thousand dollars? Trying to pull that isn't Black Hawk. I know it. Hey, Blake! Where is him, Black Hawk? You're, you're under arrest. You make mistake, Deputy. Me not Black Hawk. Steve Grote says you are. Let's get going. I tell the sheriff about this. Gosh, maybe we'll have a double hanging. Me know you, Groat. You outlaw from Montana. I remember you, too. You ride with a masked man. Why you tell deputy me, Black Hawk? Because I want you and the masked man to do me a favor. My friend not help outlaw who kill and rob Indian girl. That's just it. I feel a lot better about getting my neck stretched if I knew that the money I stole from Mary White Cloud would get back where it belonged. Maybe that way I'd be able to rest easier. You right to talk like that. I'm gonna draw you a map, see? So you and the masked man can dig up that gold. But you've gotta promise me one thing. You finish that Indian school with the money. 
Uh, me give you my word. I sure took a big chance capturing that Black Hawk alive. He's a poison mean Indian, he is. You stupid fool, that ain't Black Hawk. But he told me. So I made a mistake. Open up and turn him loose. Give him back his gun and his knife. He ain't got good sense. Me understand, Sheriff. Well, what happened to you? Oh, I just paid him off. Uh, maybe you better arrest me for assault and battery. Get him out of here. Well, it's almost time. I hope you're ready. I'm a lot more ready now than I was an hour ago, Sheriff. Let's go. He's the one that got the map. He won't keep it long. Stop. Just like he went right straight up in the air. He ain't got no wings yet. He pulled an old Indian trick. All we gotta do is squat around in a circle. You go that way and I'll go this way. We'll cross his path. Now, uh, according to Groat's map, he hid the gold in a pool of quicksand right over that ridge there. That same quicksand pool we passed this morning. Yes. Are you sure it was Black Hawk who was shooting at you? Me sure, Kimasabi. And man with him was in cell when Groat handed me map. We better get after that gold. Will you be all right if we leave you? No, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Good. to get to the goal, we've got to cross over that quicksand pool to the island. Uh, anybody fall into pool, die quick. If Groat did it, so can we. How we do it? 
Got an idea, Tello. Stand up. Come on, big fella. Good boy. Make sure he digs up the gold first. I've got a tunnel! up for the bad time you give me in Groton, Montana. Bye, mister! Now give me the gold. No, we haven't got time for that now, Blackhawk. We'll do it later. Let's go. I'm leaving. You ain't. No, Blackhawk.
On your feet, Blackhawk. This goal will help Bill Murray White Cloud School after all. But you and your friend won't be around to see it. I'll get going. That's fine, Helmut. Well, I sure wish you men could stay around to see the building finished. I do, too. With Blackhawk and that disbarred lawyer behind bars, I, I guess we owe you more than we could ever pay back. There's our reward, Sheriff. And I only wish Mary White Cloud could have seen it. She sacrificed her life for her people. And you kept her spark of faith alive with your loyalty and devotion. Well, Tano, it's time we are hitting the trail. Adios. You know, those two men saved my life and saved the school. And I didn't even get that masked man's name. Names ain't important. It's what a man does that counts. And no man's done more for the West than the Lone Ranger. By the saints, that was a close one. Father mio, he is masked. Oh, he could be wearing the mask of Beelzy Bob, and I wouldn't care. He saved our lives. Everybody all right? That we are, thanks to you, friend. May I present myself? Don Pedro Miguel Hernandez Santiago O'Sullivan. Pedro O'Sullivan? We never hear of Irishman named Pedro. I happen to be a Mexican. Mexican, a uh, red hair named O'Sullivan? And why not? My father came over from the old country. Taro, there are many Mexicans with Irish last names. This is my daughter, Conchita Colleen. Buenos dias, senores. Buenos dias. And my good right arm, Pepe, and my good left arm, Esteban. O'Sullivan. That's quite a famous name below the border. You must be the man who fought General Santoro a few years ago. That I am, and that dictator's been draining my poor countrymen dry ever since he drove me and my family out of Mexico. But the people, they want Papa back now to lead them to freedom. And why were those outlaws chasing you? Santoro knows that once I cross the border, all true Mexican patriots will rally round me. So, he sends assassins to stop me. Kimisabi, them try once, them try again. Yes, Tano. Maybe we can devise a plan to throw them off the track. You have such a plan in mind? Well, I have, Don Pedro. Follow Tano and me to where we're camped. So you failed. You turned tail and ran. I thought I'd hired killers, not cowards. We was caught between two fires, Colonel Ortega. When that masked man and Indian showed up, we had to run. Do you realize what it means if Don Pedro crosses the border? A death blow for General Santoro and for me. You better figure out a new way to stop that coach, because it's getting closer to the border every minute. Do not worry. I will figure out a way, and this time you will not fail. Oh. 
Papa. Papa? Oh, Pepe. Pepe. <laughs> oh, Surely I don't know which is which myself, <laughs> whether I'm him or he's me. <laughs> Faith, and that's the idea. Now, Tato and myself, assisted by your charming daughter, can make Santaro's cutthroat sink. We are you. You may get across the border safely. There's no time to lose, Don Pedro. You'll find the trail over behind those boulders. Chiquito Mia. Papa? Yes. I want you to wear this. Your silver medallion? Oh, no, Papa. It was you the people gave it to. It has always brought me luck. I shall feel better if you're wearing it. Viva Mexico! Viva Libertad! And now, daughter, will we be continuing on our journey? See, Papa, I'm rather looking forward to it. Be off with you, lad! Any sign of yet? Yeah, here they come. Hurry up! Let's ride in and throw some light at that coach. I want him to run that curve fast. We spoke too soon, senorita. Tell you what you can do. Drop those guns. Real easy. Now get those hands up. Yeah, Stay where you are. Devil take you, man. What's the meaning of this? So you're Don Pedro Sullivan, the great Mexican patriot. That I am. Now answer me questions. What are you up to? Colonel Ortega didn't tell us you had such a pretty daughter. You're so much as touch her and I'll break you in half of me bare hands. Guns or no guns. You know something? I think you would. Matt, get rid of the driver. Then we'll take our guest to Colonel Ortega. Now who's Colonel Ortega? And what does he want with me? Nothing much, senor. Just your life. <laughs> That's far enough. Wait here. I've got to see Colonel Ortega. Senor, what are we going to do? Play for time, senorita. Your father needs time badly if it's to get safely across the border. All right, step inside.
Don Pedro O'Sullivan. This is a rare pleasure. Is it now? For you, maybe, but not for O'Sullivan. And your charming daughter. Senorita, I bow to your beauty. I have no doubt, senor, that you do a great deal of bowing. And bootlicking, too. <laughs> well spoken, me daughter. I couldn't have said it better myself. You and your daughter are noted for your sharp tongues, Don Pedro. But they are not nearly so sharp as my bullets. And since General Santoro has decreed your immediate execution, I now have the honor to carry out his orders. Take them outside. You're going to do it now. Your father has always been admired as a brave man, senorita. I hope you can be brave enough to watch him die. You will stand with your backs to that wall, senors. You and your faithful servant. You will remain here, senorita. Gentlemen, you will attend her. But you can't kill them. Can't I? Just watch me. I will not insult you, Don Pedro, by offering you a blindfold. Have you any last wish? That I have. Will you grant it? I will. Well, then, if it's all the same to you, I should prefer to die from old age. I see that you mock me even to the end. Very well, we will waste no more time. Gentlemen, take your positions. Don Pedro will be your first target. Give me some Easy, Toro. Ready. Aim. No, wait. For what, senorita? You have orders to kill Don Pedro O'Sullivan. Is that not correct, senor? Quite correct. Then you're executing the wrong man. That is not my father. Daughter! Remember the welfare of our people. Hold your tongue. No, senor. I will let you sacrifice much for my father, but not your life. Senorita, I am disappointed in you. Such an old trick to try and stop me. You think I am lying? Well, I will prove to you that I am not. My father, he is famous for his red hair and his red beard. Is that not correct, senor? There is no one in Mexico who would deny that, senorita. Then, look at this. And this, is it truly his? So it's all a trick. But if he's not Don Pedro, then who is he? The answer is obvious, my friend. Did you not say that a masked man and an Indian helped Don Pedro escape this morning? You're right, Ortega. In a short while now, Don Pedro will be safely across the border. He is not there yet. There is still time to stop him. My men ride hard. But he's taken another road, Colonel. How do we know where to find him? I think his daughter will tell us that. We can at least execute these two imposters. Unless you choose to save their lives, senorita. Where is your father? Gentlemen, forgive this interruption. Ready. Aim. When I clap my hands together, you will fire. No, wait. I'll tell you where to look. <laughs> Reach, both of them. Your hands, Kimasabi. The ropes are too tight. <laughs> Tom, up there. If we could only get our hands on that sickle. Yeah, but how we do that, Kimasabi? When I say go, we'll shake these posts as hard as we can. Ready? Go! Your feet, Peon. Harder, 
channel. What is going on in there? If you hope to escape by shaking this building down, I fear it will not work, my friend. Look what we found in the saddlebag on the big white horse Don Pedro was riding. A good fit. Yours, I presume? Well, you will never need these again. Do you, do you have my father? Yes, senorita, safe and sound for the time being. Oh, I almost forgot. Since you were shaking the building so, it must have been for a purpose. It couldn't have been to knock this off the shelf, could it? Take this outside. And this time, keep a closer watch. Ortega, one thing before you go. Yes? Don Pedro puts great store in the silver medallion his daughter's wearing. There's an inscription on it that means a great deal to him. I think he'd like to have it before he dies. Would he indeed? To Don Pedro O'Sullivan for valor and patriotism against the traitor Santoro. So he holds great score by it, does he? That's for Don Pedro's medallion. You have no right to destroy it. I have no right. I have no right. I have every right. In a few minutes, senorita, your father will be standing in front of that courtyard wall, as you were before. When you hear the shots, he will be dead. Senor, why did you deliberately goad him into destroying my father's medallion? I'm sorry, senorita, but we need a sharp-edged tool to cut these ropes. Pure silver is a very soft metal. It can be easily pounded into a sharp-edged tool. Senor Ortega has given us just what we need. Hurry, keep us heavy. So, this time I have the honor to welcome the real Don Pedro O'Sullivan. Or have I? Ah, you don't take it! What's the meaning of the action on my beard? Just to make sure it is your beard, senor. Uh, now are you satisfied? Quite satisfied, Don Pedro. Take him out of the wall. Want me to put a bullet in him? No, no. I like his spirit. And besides, good servants are difficult to find. Tie him up. Pedro, are you ready to die? Let's go. I must ask your indulgence, Don Pedro, for giving you such a poor farewell. The great Don Pedro Miguel Hernandez Santiago O'Sullivan deserves a more distinguished firing squad. But we do the best we can. Get on with it, man. Ah, but wait. Jose, pronto. We need you and your rifle. Over there with the rest of them. And now, farewell, Don Pedro. Ready? Ready, yeah. Aim. No. I will fire the first shot. After that, if you want a little target practice. One. Two.
work on things. Watch them, Tunnel. I'm going after Ortega. Don Pedro would like to see you. Good luck, Don Pedro. You should be well across the border by nightfall. Now, this time, there'll be no one to stop you. Thank you, my friends, for me and for my countrymen. Gracias, senores. Adios, senorita. Now, that's what I call a man. Now, would you be saying perhaps there's a bit of the Irish in him, Papa? <laughs> oh, dear, will take you. There's a bit of the Irish in all of us. But in him, there's a bit of every man. And a bit of him belongs to every man. That's why his name means so much to every man. The Lone Ranger. Mayo Silver! 